Hello everyone and welcome to my CompTIA A Plus 1101 video series. In this video, I will discuss Objective 2.2, which covers various types of network hardware. We will review routers, switches, access points, and power over ethernet devices, among others. This objective, like a few others to this point, includes a lot of content. Don't forget that you can pause and make notes if you need to, and that this presentation is available for offline review when you might need it later. I'll have all of that linked in the description. With all that taken care of, let's go ahead and get started. Network hardware refers to the physical components used in computer networking to connect devices and facilitate communication. Examples of network hardware include routers, switches, modems, network interface cards, and even cables. The purpose for network hardware is to establish and maintain connections between devices, manage data traffic, and ensure smooth communication within a network. Each type of network hardware plays a specific role in enabling devices to communicate with each other and access shared resources, such as the internet and printers. Let's take a look at the hardware in more detail. First up are routers, which are highly intelligent devices that connect various types of networks. They determine the best path for sending data via routing tables that store network addresses of connected machines. Operating at the network layer or layer three of the OSI model, routers play a crucial role in connecting multiple networks and do not forward broadcast, which are data transmissions sent to all machines on the network. Finally, routers establish connections between LANs and are essential in setting up WANs or wide area networks, which require a minimum of two routers for the configuration. Next up are switches, which provide central connectivity to all computers connected to them. While they may resemble hubs, switches operate very differently. Unlike hubs that pass all traffic to all ports, switches, which are layer two devices, carefully examine incoming data and forward it to the correct port based on the MAC address of the computer. This enhances performance, but also establishes a virtual connection between the sender and the receiver. There are two main types of switches, managed and unmanaged. Managed switches offer the flexibility to configure ports, monitor traffic for potential issues, while unmanaged switches provide basic functionality without additional configuration options. Managed switches use a network protocol like Simple Network Management Protocol, or SNMP, as discussed in Objective 2.1. Although it may be more expensive, this choice offers additional features such as quality of service, redundancy, port mirroring, and virtual LANs. Quality of service, or QoS, is used to prioritize specific network traffic, for example, a particular server or an application, while redundancy provides multiple day of the pass from point A to point B. Port mirroring allows one port to replicate the traffic of another for analysis, and VLANs, which enables the segmentation of computers on the same physical switch in separate logical networks. In a typical network setup, switches are used to create an internal network infrastructure allowing devices within the same network to communicate with each other efficiently. So on the left you have two computers that are connected to one switch that would allow those two computers to communicate with each other. Then you have routers which are used to connect the internal networks together and facilitate communication between devices in different networks. So on the right you have a switch that is connecting PC3 and in order for PC3 to communicate with PC1 or PC2 you would have to have the router in between the switches allowing those two networks to be connected. Switches and hubs are networking devices that play different roles in connecting computers in a network. Remember, switches act as a central connectivity point for connecting computers and ensuring efficient data transmission. Hubs, on the other hand, although similar to appearances with switches, operate very differently by simply repeating any received signal to all of the ports, a process known as broadcasting. Hubs, also called multi-port repeaters, operate at layer one of the OSI model and become less effective as network traffic grows due to their basic data handling capabilities. If a hub had five computers connected to it, with one sending data and two receiving data, the hub would broadcast the data to all connected devices. This means that even the computers not involved in the data exchange would receive the data. Hubs operate at the physical layer of the network and do not manage data flow or direct it specifically to any intended computers. Instead, it simply broadcasts the data to all connected devices. However, a switch in a very similar network setup would only deliver data to the computers that it needed to send it to. This is because it directs traffic and only sends it to the computers that need it. An access point, whether used for wired or wireless networks, enables users to connect to the network using 802.11 technology. While the term access point is mainly associated with networks or wireless networks, it is important to note that it is not a wireless router. Unlike routers that manage network traffic, access points solely provide a wireless signal for users to connect to the network. In most cases, access points utilize power over ethernet for connectivity. 
Multiple access points can be strategically placed throughout a building to ensure continuous signal coverage as users move around. By having access points in various locations, the wireless network can provide overlapping coverage areas, allowing devices to easily switch from one access point to another without losing connectivity. This setup helps to eliminate dead zones and ensures a consistent and reliable connection for users as they move throughout the building. It also helps in balancing the network load and preventing overcrowding on a single access point, leading to better overall performance and user experience. Patch panels are nothing more than a rack-mounted network hub with multiple ports which serves to connect cables together without directing traffic like a router or a switch would. Short patch cables are used to link the front panel connectors to a switch, while longer cables are used to establish a more permanent connection throughout the building by being punched down at the back of the patch panel. Let's take a quick look at an example of how a patch panel is used in a network. Here you can see that we have three machines, each of which are connected to the network with an Ethernet cable. Each Ethernet cable connects to an Ethernet wall jack. Each wall jack has a cable that runs throughout the building, either in the walls or the ceilings, to the back of the patch panel, where it is punched down or terminated. This activates the corresponding port on the front of the patch panel. Then a short Ethernet or patch cable is used to connect the port to the switch. This does a couple things. First, it helps with cable management. While there may be some overlapping of cables behind the patch panel, the front cables that connect to the switch are organized. Second, this prevents wear and tear on the cables that run throughout the building if maintenance needs to be performed. If the images do not really help with the example, I have my uh, patch panel here and how they connect to my switch. Now, I do not have network ports all over my house. As a matter of fact, the only thing that I have that connects to an ethernet cable is right here in my office. Everything else connects to my access point or is wireless. So everything you see here, whether it be my lights, my test bench, my Mac, um, you know, all of the things here that I have on my patch panel, they all run basically from the back to the device here in the office. And then from there, I just have them connect to my Netgear switch. But instead of having all of these different cables, and then, you know, depending on which direction they're coming from, whether it be the right or the left back here, and then, you know, the cables coming in and kind of being a little bit of a mess here, it's a little bit easier to have all of the cables in the back behind the patch panel and then simply just run a short little patch cable to the switch. So I went ahead and uh, popped the patch panel out of my network rack so you guys could get a little bit more of a visual. I know it may be a little bit hard to see, but you can see cables uh, being punched down to the back of the patch panel. And then basically what that does is it activates the port on the front of the patch panel. So right there you can see uh, you've got several cables connected to the right of the patch panel with this one here on the left kind of by itself. All of that activates the ports on the front, which then if you go around to the front here, then you can see that's why we have all of the cables connected to each one of those ports. Firewalls are crucial components of network security, whether in the form of hardware or software. They serve to protect the network in multiple ways. First, firewalls safeguard network resources from external threats and potential cyber attacks. Second, they act as a barrier, preventing computers within the network from accessing harmful or suspicious content on the internet. This is achieved by filtering traffic based on predefined rules set by the network administrator, which dictate which traffic is allowed to pass through and which is blocked. Most firewalls are equipped with at least two network connections, one facing the internet or the public side, and the other facing internally the private side. Some firewalls feature a third network port designed for connecting a secondary semi-internal network. This additional port is utilized to link servers that serve both the public and private functions, such as web and email servers. The in-between network created by this setup is commonly referred to as a screen subnet. Firewalls come in two main types, network-based or hardware, which are firewalls that safeguard for a group of computers or an entire network, and then host-based, which is going to be software, and those are firewalls that protect individual computers, like having Windows Defender. Power over Ethernet, or PoE, is a convenient technology where power is delivered through an Ethernet cable along with the data, eliminating the need for a separate power source. It is very beneficial in scenarios where devices are placed in remote areas without power outlets. Common PoE devices include phones, cameras, and access points. However, for this to function properly, both the network hardware and the connected device must be PoE compatible. An example of PoE setup is shown here, featuring a PoE switch supplying power to different PoE devices connected to it. In this configuration, the PoE switch is considered an in-span PoE device. It is at the end of the network connection. If the switch does not support power over Ethernet, you have the option to buy a mid-span device that can be inserted between the switch and the PoE device, such as a wireless access point. This mid-span device, also known as a PoE injector, is specifically designed to deliver power through the Ethernet connection. 
Comparing a regular switch with a power over ethernet switch, you can see it will actually be labeled on the port. So as you can see on the bottom switch, you have a port here that is labeled PoE, indicating that it is capable of providing power over ethernet. Whereas the switch on top has five ports, none of them are labeled PoE. Power over ethernet standards define the technical specifications for delivering electrical power along with data over ethernet cables. There are several PoE standards, including IEEE 802.3AF, IEEE 802.3AT, and IEEE 802.3BT. These standards differ in terms of the amount of power that can be delivered and the hardware that they can support. For example, IEEE 802.3AF can deliver up to 15.4 watts of power per port and supports devices such as access points and static cameras, while IEEE 802.3AT can deliver up to 30 watts per port and supports alarm systems and point tilt zoom cameras. IEEE 802.3BT, also known as Power Over Ethernet++, can provide even higher power levels, up to 90 watts per port, and supports video conferencing equipment, laptops, and flat panel displays. Different devices and network equipment support different PoE standards, so it's important to ensure compatibility when setting up a PoE network. On the flip side to Power Over Ethernet is a device known as Ethernet Over Power, which is utilized in situations where running a cable for a network connection or relying on wireless connectivity is not possible. This device is handy in scenarios where some devices only feature a wired RJ45 port but are not easily accessible by a cable directly connected to the router. It is crucial for the ELP setup to function properly that both devices are on the same circuit. Traditional modems are now considered obsolete as most homes have switched to either using cable modems or DSL modems. Cable modems use TV cable lines for internet connectivity and are actually digital, making them technically not a modem. Offering high-speed networking up to 1 gigabits per second, cable modems are suitable for handling data, voice, and video efficiently. However, they share the signal with others in the area, have limited availability, and are usually a little bit more expensive compared to DSL modems. DSL modems use telephone lines to provide high-speed networking with speeds also up to 1 gigabits per second, making them fast enough to handle data, voice, and video transmissions just like cable. This dedicated signal is not shared with others in your area, ensuring reliable connectivity. DSL is widely available in most areas and is typically more affordable than cable internet. A fiber connection to your business or home requires an optical network terminal or ONT modem to connect to the ISP for internet access. This connection uses optical signals that are converted to electrical ones. The ONT modem is usually installed discreetly in a wiring closet or at a junction box outside of the building. The fiber connection terminates on the outside of the building for the ISP side where it is converted to an electrical signal on the inside of the building, your network. The network interface card, or NIC, serves as the main physical connection point between a computer and the network cabling. It is an essential component found in all network connected devices, such as computers, printers, servers, phones, laptops, switches, and routers. The NIC is responsible for preparing, sending, and managing the data flow of the computer. Typically integrated into the motherboard of these desktops and mobile devices, NICs can also be added to devices if necessary. There are various types of NICs available, including single port, multi-port, and wireless options. There are a few more key points that you need to know about NICs. First, compatibility is key, ensuring that the NIC fits into the bus type of your PC, whether it is PCI or PCI Express. Next is performance. Performance should be optimized by choosing the fastest card suitable for your network type. For example, selecting an 802.11 AX card for network supporting 802.11 GNAC or AX. NIC send and control data efficiently, which involves knowing the size, timing, and speed of the data transmission. Also, each NIC has a unique 48-bit media access control or MAC address, which is written in hexadecimal format. This is known as the physical address of the device. Last, drivers play a crucial role as they are software specifically designed for the NIC to interact effectively with the operating system. Each NIC model will have its own drivers that must be installed and kept up to date to function properly. Alright guys, so that wraps up Objective 2.2. Don't forget, have all of the questions for this content linked below. And you can also access this presentation at any time from my website. And also, I'll have it linked in the description as well. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate. Go ahead and leave those below and I will answer them if I can. I'll see you all in the next objective.